Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the Odd Man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is The Odd Man. Greetings and salutations. What's happening, everybody? My name is Audley Stevenson, and welcome to the most audacious podcast on the web. Of course, this is the Audacious Living Podcast, and I'm appreciative, as always, that you've taken a moment out of your day and have chosen to spend it here with us as we continue our ongoing goal of helping you live your best audacious life ever. Uh, of course, I always encourage uh, the connecting to our social media channels. Uh, we are on Twitter and Instagram under the handle the audacious pod and then on facebook it's the audacious living podcast so uh, as always you know please connect with us uh like follow subscribe share uh, subscribe to our youtube channel as well um and again you'll get alerts every time there's new content that comes out so that way you're in the loop you're in the you're in the know and you're on top of things question for you have you ever put any thought or even asked the question why do many, so many of us stop learning new skills as adults? Is it because it was too hard? Are we embarrassed to try and learn something new? Is it a comfort thing? Um, you know, I know we're busy and life consumes so much of our time, but it can have something to do with that. Um, or maybe we just think that we get to a certain point in life and we don't need to learn anything new. Um, for some, that very well could be it. Or maybe we're just simply afraid to fail. Well, whatever it is, it's clear that this thing that we've forgotten about uh, is that natural feeling of pleasure that comes along with being a beginner beginner, or, or starting something brand new. Um, that feeling can be so exciting because it is a new journey. And uh, you know what's great about it is that we're starting a new journey knowing full well that you know we really don't have any idea you know, how to do what we're about to do, but we're going to proceed anyways, because that's what beginners do. Well, all of this is a great segue into today's episode, uh, as we'll be welcoming uh, journalist and blogger Tom Vanderbilt to the podcast. Uh, he's the author of the book, Beginners, The Joy of Transformative Power of Lifelong learning. Uh, and it really is an interesting read. Uh, I found it fascinating because uh, Tom examines that topic of learning and, and being a beginner while chronicling all of the joys of, of learning and the new things, you know, as we get older. Um, I think as you read it, you can't help but put yourself uh, and become self-aware of yourself and how easy it is to become settled uh, into our own skills and hobbies that we already know and, and, and not branch out. Think about this for a moment. How often do you do, do, you do things that you don't already know or, or that you know that you're not good at? Or even ask yourself, when was the last time you tried to learn something new that you knew you couldn't do or you knew you weren't good at? You know, I think the more of us, I think more, the, the more of us should think about that, taking that first step and what that looks like and, and really challenge ourselves to come out of that comfort zone by taking up that new thing. Y you may never, ever be good at it, but that experience of going through the process will prove to be invaluable. You know, you know in writing uh, this book, you know, Tom takes uh, his readers through what it's like to, to learn new skills and hobby. And in his case, you know, he, he took that on himself. So, he, you know, he learned chess, singing, surfing, drawing, and even tried juggling. Uh, so he chats about uh, uh, that experience as well as the various people that he encountered and their experiences. And, and he learns 
about you know why they chose to learn something new, you know the science behind it, and then what he took personally out of the experiences. So it's a really enjoyable conversation, and and I think all of you will, will take something away from it. So without any further ado, here's my chat with Tom Vanderbilt. Enjoy. So 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 first off, thank you uh, for being here uh, on the podcast, uh, talking about. Uh, your book, Beginners, I want to make sure I get the, the joy and transformative power of, of lifelong learning. Um, I'm not quite sure how many people would think of learning as being something joyful or transformative. So I wanted to start at the title, if you sort of talk about that and, and how you arrived there. Yeah, uh, you know, well, the title itself, Beginners, I mean, I really wanted to kind of rehabilitate the word beginners, I think it has, a, for many people, has kind of a negative connotation. It's like, it's this awkward stage you have to get through when you start something new. And, right. you know, you, t- you take a new class or something, you're ranked by ability, there's like experts, intermediate, and then the lowly beginners. And it's just, you know, no, no one really wants to be a beginner uh, in their minds. So I, you know, there's, there's a certain stigma to that. And that, I think, keeps people from embracing or, or launching upon new uh, endeavors or pursuits or quests to learn new skills because it, it, it's an it's a horrible stage uh, especially when you're a bit older you know you get used to sort of being good at things you, you want to be known for being good at things so suddenly you're out there in public doing some you know skill like surfing or something falling looking like an idiot but that's a hard thing for for adults to take on so I really kind of wanted to you know just make this a you know a badge of honor in a way to to be a beginner and I myself am, am still trying to be a beginner in, in new things. And uh, so does that explain it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I was very much interested for that journey, how you got to the point of, of, of you know, of, of this particular concept, because as, as you said, uh, being a beginner uh, isn't always an easy thing, especially for adults, right? Like you get to a point where I think for some, they think, okay, I don't need to learn anymore because I'm an adult. But, we, you know, uh, the, the concept of learning, if you will, isn't restricted to just young people. Yeah, and it was actually, you know, being around a young person, namely my young daughter, that really put me on this this path. Because I think anyone who's a parent and has this young child, suddenly they're kind of reawakened to the idea of learning because, you know, it's so essential for children. Children are just young, sort of learning sponges and machines. Uh, and in most of what we teach them, we sort of already know, or we have some sense of, you know, how how to ride a bike, how to how to speak. Uh, we can. You know, they learned to walk on their own, more or less. But um, but then what happened with me is that there came a time when my daughter, a very simple thing, she wanted to play a game of chess. She saw this chess board in a library. And I, I said, I'd love to play. I, I actually don't know how. I, I used to know. Maybe I learned when I was little, but I've forgotten. So, you know, I had two choices. I could just sort of walk away and say, no, let's not, let's not do that. Or I could try to learn myself to teach her. And, you know, chess is a very complicated game. So sure. I thought... You know, I, I got to a certain point where I learned the basic moves, but I thought, well, I'm not really going to be able to be that effective in teaching her. So I, I did this thing where I hired a coach or, you know, a tutor, basically. And I thought, well, if he could teach her a little bit, maybe we'll see if she likes it. So the guy came over and I was, then I was like, well, why should I just be sitting on the sidelines when there's this thing that I want to learn that's right in front of me? And, and this was a pattern that I had been kind of stuck in. I had been taking my daughter to various classes and she was doing a lot. I was basically sitting on the sidelines making little movies of her, which, you know, as a proud parent, but I also sort of felt like I was a little bit stuck and that I was sending her this message that learning is so important, but I myself wasn't really demonstrating that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. No, I get get it. You know, and and I think part of the reason why it sort of resonates with me is, you know, I, I learned how to bike ride as an adult. Like, you know, I didn't didn't ride a bike as a kid. And, and uh, you know, I think for me, the part that, I, and obviously you, you enjoy that whole experience because it's, it's brand new to you. But then, you know, teaching my own children how to, you know, to now, okay, here's how you, and now I'm actually doing it from the ex- experiential standpoint, as opposed mm-hmm. to, I think it's like this and try, you know, so it, it, and so that's one of the reasons why it really resonates with me. And I, I guess you hear a lot of stories from people who, who are, that, since writing this book, who've sort of shared their experiences. Oh, certainly. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, well, I'm just curious about this, about your story about learning to ride a bike. I mean, this, this is one thing, you know, I think, you know, it probably, you, you understand very well, it's, it's harder to learn things as adults than children because, you know, physical skills, because, you know, adults tend to get 
embarrassed more easily. They overthink things. They, you know, our bodies are more fragile than kids. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sympathetic to anyone who has to try to learn something as an adult because it, it and finding the time. I mean, kids have a lot of free time. Um, but yeah, I met, you know, a fascinating range of, of people that were picking up things well into, I mean, beyond adulthood, let's say. I mean, there was a guy who was trying to juggle, who was uh, juggle five balls, which is very hard. Uh, he was in his 80s, you know, so this is, you know, but I, I applaud that spirit, you know, that the idea that this concept of neuroplasticity in the brain, that you can you can reshape your brain by learning something new. I mean, that doesn't go away. You have to basically work harder to get the same results that a younger person would, but the potential is still there. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to turn it entirely into an age thing, but I was particularly inspired by those people that were, were older than me and learning things that were and they were better than me. And I was sort of thinking, well, there's a future role model uh, for, for me. And we, you know, we don't really tend to think when we're in our fifties of, you know, future role models because, uh, but th there they were. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was the, one of the best parts of working on this was just meeting some of these other beginners. And as the book came out, after the book came out, I've been hearing from all kinds of sure. people who, especially during the pandemic, who, who picked up new right. things or, or returned to old things they had kind of left behind. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you just go back to sort of my experience. I think one of the things, and sometimes why learning can be scary for people is because again, as an adult, you should know this already, or you should have done this, or why don't you know? And I think that one of the biggest things, and, and, and Tom, it's so small, but one of the biggest things that made a difference for me is that we had, you know, I was out on, in front of the house and sort of on the street there trying to keep my balance. And, you know, so neighbors are coming outside and going, go, go. And there was that encouragement and that confidence. And that really and truly, when I reflect back, that was the difference maker more than anything else. And it sort of alleviated all those fears and concerns and doubts that I had. And that's what kids have all the time, right? I mean, parents or friends or, you know, we, we they do, kids can do something very poorly and we applaud it, you know, because it's, it's that spirit they're trying, um, you know, at, and I'm glad that your neighbors were, were supportive, um, you know, and I, I myself, you know, I, I picked up, you know, road cycling, which is a, a form of bicycling, same idea, it's just a slightly, you know, more expensive bike and you, and you go faster, but there's a special kind of, you know, pedal there, they're called clipless pedals, the kind that, you know, people, you have to clip in with these special cleats. Yes. And that was a new learning process for me. And I had to go to a, a park in the, I went early in the morning, so no one would see me. And of course, I fell over once or twice because it's a, it's a hard new skill to learn. So you know, I think I think that the struggle is real and, and it's it's always there. But um, but kudos for trying. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Now uh, you also picked up a few other skills. You chess, surfing was one of them, I think. Right, juggling. Sort of talk about how you identified which things you were going to take on to do. Yeah, it was it was kind of a, a life list that was in the back of my head. You know, just things I had had an eye on or thought you know, kind of scratched my head, hmm, that would be, that would be fun to take, take a crack at. And, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, so surfing was especially, you know, romantic idea because it was on the coast. I mean, people, people do surf in Lake Michigan, uh, right. but I didn't, I didn't know that when I was younger. Um, so, but I, I wanted to make it, I, I kind of got away from the idea of doing things that I thought would be particularly good for my career. You know, like something like learning coding. I don't know, who knows, that might be interesting, or, or statistics. Statistics would be no doubt a valuable thing for me to know as, as a journalist, how to learn how to understand numbers or when, when studies are being presented in a, in a way that's not correct. But, and, and I'm terrible with math, so this, this would have been a, a very hard process. But, you know, I just wanted things that were for my own personal growth, not so much the career. Things that I, and also importantly, that I would have fun doing because you know learning as, as you say you know there is a struggle aspect there and if, if something is fun to practice there's just you know it's, it's a no-brainer that you're going to be more willing to want to do it yeah. and then there's sort of that nice virtuous cycle that happens where if it's fun to practice you practice more then you get better and the better you are the more you enjoy the thing the more you enjoy the thing the more you want to go back and practice to get better it all works out well if, if, if you're just knocking your head against the wall it's not fun to do, you know, it's very hard to get better in, in that for, for something that's not a life or death thing. I mean, let, let's, let's be real. These are, you know, these, these are hobbies. These are secondary pursuits that, that I think are valuable, but you know, they're not going to pay your bills or, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's a, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Again, you're, you're just taking something on and, you know, and again, there's, there's, there's no tie to stick with it if you don't 
figure it out. It's easy to, easier to quit, if you will, or give it up or move your attention elsewhere. So I get it loud and clear. Um, I want to talk about the, the significance in, in failing when it comes to learning, right? Because uh, you obviously, as like, you, you talked about yourself, you know, you, you, you fall down a couple of times as you're, you're learning a new skill. Um, and as, as adults, we, we, we sometimes are fa- afraid to fail. Yeah, I mean, failure is essential learning. There's a certain argument that, you know, if there's no failure, there is no learning because, you know, if you, if you already know how to do something, then you, you, you already know it, you're not learning. So it's kind of an obvious thing, but um, you know, again, this is something that children, children fail endlessly. You know, an infant learning to walk, I spent some time with researchers who were looking into this question can fall, you know, 20, 30, up to 70 times an hour. I mean, if we, if we took up something like walking, learning to walk and, and had that kind of failure rate, I think we would, it would be hard for us to stick with that. So, but this is the way they're, they're just throwing themselves into it, figuring it out with their, their bodies and their brains as, as they go along. Um, you know, it, it's nice if you have a coach nearby or a supportive person that can see maybe why you're failing and give you a little bit of feedback in that regard. But sometimes you don't have that. You just have to figure it out yourself, go through that process. Uh, you know, that itself I think is, is incredibly valuable and a source of, of growth and, 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 and knowledge. And um, I mean, yeah, I sort of make the joke that, you know, like in the matrix, Keanu Reeves, he sort of wait, you know, he, he snaps, wakes up and he's like, I know Kung Fu. You know, I, I, w- I would like it if I could just get to being a master surfer without this incredibly long, hard, painful process of all these mistakes. Some of them, which were very painful, had me in the doctor's office, but you know, that, that sort of struggle, you know, I, I think makes it sounds counterintuitive, but more, more pleasurable. You know, the idea that you got through something and, and, you know, you've, you've hit the lows. So you have these, these highs ahead of you. And um, so I think, again, it's, it's hard for adults to want that, to avoid failure. And then there's certain, you know, certain ways we try to avoid failure. I mean, I, I have this argument against training wheels on, on bicycles. You know, par- parents put them on there because they don't want, they want their kids to think that they're riding a bike. They don't want to see them fail, but they really just, in my opinion, you know, in place a, a false confidence. Right. And what happened with my daughter is, yeah, she was riding along, but she kind of thought she knew how to ride a bike, but she didn't really understand the balance mechanism. So she was going pretty fast, took her first turn, plopped over sideways, even with the training wheels. So I, I took those training wheels off let her experience the feeling of the bike and her, the balance she needed with her body. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a much faster process, which had a few mistakes, but so I, I think, yeah, we should, we should take, we should all take off the training wheels when we're trying to learn. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so hard to sometimes accept the fact, or it can be hard to accept the fact that you have to have these mistakes. You have to fall down. It's all part of that entire process. And uh, if you can find a way to sort of, question your fault, so to speak. So the damage is minimal, you know, and you walk away with something. I think that's where the advantage is. That's where you learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I went through so many failure processes in the, in the course of this book and, and moments that just my head was just hurting, you know, trying to figure out some juggling trick or singing scales into an iPhone app that measured your, 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 you know, your accuracy of your tones and, and seeing these numbers, like it was, it was one to a, zero to a hundred was the scale. And I was, I was in the fifties when I started and, and that was just incredibly frustrating, you know, just, but you just have to just bang on and, and go at it. And the good news is, you know, you do get better. Uh, you know, it helps if you have someone there to show you how to get better, but you can get better on your own. There's plenty of people that have learned to play guitar on YouTube and, the most fun thing about being a beginner in some ways is that the progress is so quick in the beginning, this kind of steep learning curve. It looks like this on a, on a graph, you know, here's time, here's progress. You know, a- after, after a day, you could probably learn to ski, not, not particularly well, but you can get up and uh, day before you were not a skier, suddenly you're a skier. So that's incredibly empowering. Um, you really threw yourself into this project. I mean, when you're doing project, like you really committed yourself all in, so to speak, to make sure that uh, you're providing that appropriate context. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of tend to, well, you know, it, it, it's a good point, but I, I, in some ways I wished I had gotten better at a lot of the things, but so I, I had to sort of come to an, my own realization that, you know, you can have a lot of, pleasure and feel satisfaction in, in, in marking any, any amount of progress. You know, yes, I'm not as good as surfing 
as I hoped I would be, but I, I'm actually, you know, sort of a surfer. I'm out there. I can do it to a certain extent, you know, in certain conditions where, uh, so I think that's something as well that people should, should keep in mind is just to keep, I think it helps to keep the expectations and the goals actually low in the beginning. I mean, not, not that you can't refine them and you, know, you shouldn't keep trying to progress, but to start out with a set of unrealistic goals, I think it's just going to backfire because it's going to be hard for you to hit those goals. You're going to think that you made the wrong choice. Maybe I should have picked something else. Maybe I'm not a natural right. talent at this. Um, but if you could just, you know, okay, day, you know, week one, if I could just I can just stand on the board for a second. Okay, that then that's an amazing achievement. You can walk away with that, build on that for the next thing. If you come in saying, okay, after one year, I'm going to be inside, you know, I'm going to get barreled at pipeline in Hawaii, that, that's not a realistic uh, goal for a late 40s, you know, guy. That's just that's just not who, who's never surfed before in his life. That's not realistic. That's so it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> I, 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 I really love the fact that you, you, you talked about goals and breaking that down and sort of bite-sized morsels that you can accomplish and achieve, but more importantly, build off of it because that, 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 that really what we talk about learning, you know, sometimes, you know, we forget learning is that entire process, not just at the, the end goal, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's it, and that, is that fair to say? Is that? Yeah. And these, and these goal these things I took on are really what attracted me is that they're, they're big pursuits. They're, they're, they're lifetime pursuits. I mean, you could, right spend your entire life surfing and, and still find some way to challenge yourself to get better. Um, singing, you know, would be the same thing. I mean, there are, you know, if you talk to professional musicians that they, they're still taking singing lessons. I mean, they're, they, they still feel like they have, you know, room, room to grow. Um, chess players always think they can get better. Um, and what, you know, it always amazes me that, you know, someone like Magnus Carlsen, who's the current uh, chess champion, number top best chess player in the world, you know, he has a coach. He, he gets lessons and you think who can, who can give lessons to the, the greatest player in, in the world. But, you know, there, there's other people might see weaknesses in his game that he can, he can address. And yeah, so it's just. Never too much knowledge. No, <laughs> never have too much. You, you know, Tom, a big part of why I was so, I was so excited to have you on the podcast to talk because we spent a lot of time on the program talking about the importance of being bold and the importance of, of, of taking risks and the importance of, of, of putting yourself out there. And, and, and this is what we're talking about is very much in line with that. Before you, know, you can commit to learning, you've got to take that first step. I wanted to sort of talk about the significance of boldness in, in the conversation we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, well, I think one of the hardest things for people is just just taking that, like you say, that first step. I mean, which really boils down to, you know, just signing up for something, just making that call. Just, uh, for example, I met you know a, a woman who's uh, French and she was an older woman and and she had always wanted to swim and and couldn't really swim. And then one day she was looking at a magazine, saw this article about these these swim trips that people took where they went swimming in the ocean, uh, you know, for for couple days or a week and, and it, to her it looked amazing but she thought you know how can I how can I swim in the ocean when I can't even swim in a pool but you know that that didn't stop her she started small she went to her local pool she tried to get lessons but they actually didn't give adult lessons because he, they thought you know, well you should already know how to swim um, and she had her, her sister help she looked at videos on YouTube and she just you know every day got a little bit better kept the goals low but then and you know <laughs> this is a woman who was you know, not young, had smoked a lot, like a lot of, you know, French people, uh, you know, and then, but I met her on an open water ocean swimming trip. And this is something, you know, so that like talk about boldness, this, you know, she had gone from reading this article in this magazine, the kind of thing that most people would say, ah, I'd like to do that someday. And, and I think a lot of us, you know, have that moment where we, I'd like to do that someday. And then we just file it away and, you know, we kind of cherish it like a little treasure, but we never actually do anything about it. So I think her, you, know, you just have to commit, just go to that class, just do that introductory thing, you know, buy that guitar, whatever, whatever it is. And that can be the hardest thing. And, and when I was learning to sing the first day I walked into the uh, instructor's, uh, you know, room, she, she asked me to just sing a song. I was like, like, that was one of the hardest things I've had to do in my life because it's just, it's a very, you know, vulnerable thing. I mean, you can sing in the shower and in the car and luckily no one hears you, but there's something, you know, so that, you know, it was it, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have imagined myself being in that position to, to do that. And, you know, so yeah, and then you get, you get through it and it doesn't kill you and you get, you get confident and soon you're, you're doing uh, bigger things. 
but it all starts with that in that first step. That's right. And, 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 and I love that question because it's a question we often have, we've asked ourselves, you know, I'd like, or a statement where I'd like to do that someday, right? And so, so yeah. that, that oftentimes prefaces that sort of first step. And then when you do, you've now strung together a couple of wins, right? You went from, you know, acknowledging it to actually taking that step. And I think those are all key and very much in line with what we're talking about. So. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Tom, I, I, I really, really appreciate uh, yeah, you're taking the time. Uh, I said the book, there's a lot of great learnings in that. And, and even, I think what I really appreciate is that, that journey that you, you, you go to and um, or go through rather, uh, because I really, it, it really shows there's some real psychology behind it. And we oftentimes talk about lifelong learning. You gave the example of the 90 year old learning how to swim and um, you know, it, it, it doesn't stop. And I think uh, more than anything, that, that's one of the keys that you want people to take away. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, exactly. That it's it's a lifetime sport, and the and the other you know one other big takeaway I think is that we, we get hung up in the idea of natural talent. I think that that prevents people from trying a lot of things because they just suspect that they don't have a natural talent. Because you know if they did, why why don't I already know how to do this thing? Why? But you know I before this you know I had no there, there's certainly no evidence that I have any you know natural musical vocal ability, any artistic ability. I don't really have a great sense of balance, which is, you know, kind of helps with surfing. Um, I don't, <laughs> there's no evidence that I would be some great chess player. So, you know, uh, if I had gone on this, this notion of, you know, well, what, what do I think I'm going to be good at? I probably wouldn't have started any of these things because, uh, you know, they, but that doesn't mean that I didn't make progress and that they didn't bring a lot of joy and satisfaction to my life and, and sort of expanded the sense of, of who I am, my sense of self, self and, and sort of opened these doors that were, either closed to me or that I didn't even know exist. And then it, it just hooked me into these very interesting worlds where I met very interesting people and, and just did things that uh, I thought, you know, I, I wouldn't be good at. And maybe I'm not amazing, but, you know, I'm so much better than I was, I was before. And, and really the idea is that, that I'm, I, I am, I'm just, I'm doing them. So I, I, that, that, that'd be the final message. Just don't get it hung up as much on the performance and, and just focus on, on trying to learn and enjoy that process uh, for itself. Awesome. You know, you know, it's incredible how much that self-talk goes in our, goes on in our heads. You know, I can't, I don't know how, I'm too old. Uh, that it's just incredible that, and, and I think oftentimes those are the things and the barriers that you don't, don't even allow us to take that first step. Yeah, I wish there was, you know, a magic pill we could just swallow that would eliminate self-talk in certain, uh, certain, certain situations. But other times it's, it's probably very useful. But yeah, it was, that was definitely, I had a lot of self-talk. I had decades of self-talk that kept me away from from trying these things. And I'm, I'm glad I kind of got to it before. Well, I was gonna say before it's too late, but it really is never too late. But now that I've gotten into it, I, I have more time to enjoy it for myself and uh, my you know daughter and, and wife can enjoy that journey also. So yeah, I would just urge people just to just sign up, call that coach, go to that class, you know, just be that person, you're gonna fall down, it's okay. <laughs> What's next, Tom? For what's what's the next, uh, next on the list? Uh, is it a bucket list, maybe of things that you want to learn, or what you got? <laughs> Some, you know, yeah, probably in the back of my head. Sometimes, and sometimes it's just you know you just stumble across something. I mean, I we I was uh, indoor climbing with my daughter yesterday. Something that I, I haven't really done very much of, and you could I could just feel all those beginners' gears shifting again because you know my muscles are sore, my brain is kind of buzzing with like, how, you know, how do you get up that wall using those things? How, how could you even do that? And yeah, so it, it's, it's fun. And, and of course there's new stuff to, to buy and new, new gear to geek out about. So that, that's always fun too. So <laughs> it's a whole new subculture climbing, rock climbing. Exactly. exactly. You get into that and never come out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Tom, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time and being on the podcast today. Uh, like I My said, pleasure, Audley. Thank you. As beginners, I think that I think people walk away with a newfound understanding of what you know, lifelong re learning is really all about. So, thank you so much for the time today, Tom. Thank you. Back we are here on the podcast. A big shout out and thanks to Tom uh, for taking some time and, and spending here with us and also proving and reminding us rather that it is very possible for an old dog to learn a trick or two. Uh, Tom left us with so much to think about, but I, if I were to reflect in our conversation as one thing I would take away, it would be this. 
We all, we all know that learning is lifelong and will continue to happen as long as you remain curious about the things that life has to offer and be willing to take that first step like we talked about. Because we actually have to go after them for that learning process to begin. Whether it's to make that call or to call that coach, it starts with us. You know, one of my kids recently picked up guitar playing and he's progressing very well after a relatively short period of time. And I'm happy for him because he's acquired a new skill and who knows where it will take him. Now, if I were to decide to pick up a guitar and, and try to learn it, it's highly unlikely that you know I'll be the next Jimi Hendrix. But that doesn't mean I don't try. That doesn't mean it doesn't benefit me. It doesn't mean that I don't leave from that experience with something new. So why not try? Who knows what will come out of it? Uh, hey, if you, if you haven't registered yet for email notifications of the podcast, you can do so by heading over to bestaudaciouslife.com, entering your, in your email address, and you'll be immediately alerted every time there's new content that comes out. Uh, I'm always appreciative and thankful to our listeners uh, for taking some time uh, to hang out here with us. And uh, you please know that your support, your ongoing support is tremendous and it is appreciated. We've reached the end of another episode, so until next time, stay safe, be kind, and show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.